All right. Welcome, everybody, to this month's ARIS Innovator Demo Series. My name is Stephen Newman. I'm the Manager of Marketing Programs here at ARIS. This month's demo topic will be covering requirements management to be presented by ARIS Product Manager Dave Ewing. Before we get going, just want to tell you a couple things about the demo series. This is a 30-minute webcast. It's all demo, no sales pitch. Uh, we do these once a month, and each month we fe feature a different capability of ARIS Innovator. If you want more information on previous and upcoming demos, please visit our new landing page, aris.com slash demo series, you can see all the previous ones that we've been doing and all the ones that we'll be doing for the rest of the year. So with all that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Dave, and we'll get started. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon, everyone, uh, depending on where you're at. So uh, just a brief introduction. My name is David Ewing, uh, and I am product manager here at Aris. Uh, my responsibilities are requirements management, uh, also uh, some areas of the product engineering tools and uh, general user uh, productivity improvements. So with that said, the requirements management product is, while we call it a product, it's, it's a, an add-on or bolt-on to the Innovator platform. And it's part of the subscription model that we have here. So what that means is, is you have to be a licensed a subscription uh, user. This is not one of the, the open source uh, options. So. Hopefully everyone's a subscriber. If you're not, hopefully you will be soon. So, and as far as the installation goes, once you have your license, typically this is something your admin would deal with if, if you're in a production environment. Uh, that would be installed on the server. There's no client installation to, to be installed, so your individual users don't need to worry about having someone to come and touch their, their computer to, to make everything happen. So as far as the user interface, once you uh, have everything installed and you have the permissions, to, to access everything, you would see the requirements management uh, item here in the table of contents. And, and along, as with everything else, this is all our, part of our consistent uh, user interface. Everything is secure, browser-based, and I, I did mention a little bit of the, the visibility in the table of contents. So if you want to manage permissions based on uh, roles or by individuals or groups or anything like that, you can change that visibility. So if you didn't want a certain group of people to be able to see requirements management here, you could turn that uh, capability off. Uh, as we, we jump in, you'll see the same search grid and capabilities uh, as the, the other parts of Innovator. So just going to uh, jump in here and look at our requirements documents. And really, when we talk about requirements, you know, at the very most basic, we're talking about defining the features, the functions, uh, perhaps testing uh, and so on that a product must conform to. And, and every company is going to do it a little differently. I'm, we're just trying to give you a notional demonstration here of some of the capabilities and some of the, the different uh, options. So we have a, a pre-built demo database that I'm actually using here today that some of you, if you were at our ACE conference this year in Detroit, would have seen some of this. And so we're just picking up with that. And so as you jump into your requirements documents here, you'll see a, a number of documents in here. And you know, typical grid format here. Your, your requirement document can take many different forms. They could be customer requirements, product line documents, uh, regulatory requirements, test specifications, manufacturing, any number of those things. Um, and that's all going to depend on you know, how you use the requirements management tool in your business process. So as I open my requirement document here and I took take a look at things, um, again, this is just a notional example. It, it's a pretty typical layout that you've seen before in the different parts of Innovator. And we've, we've got uh, different groups of people. It can be people or groups that you can set your managed and owned by, your titles. And like everything else in Innovator, it's revision controlled and it's got statusing. And I'll actually refer back to that in just a little bit. And kind of the, the rubber meets the road down here in the content area. This is where we actually link in our individual requirements. The requirement document, you can sort of think of that as a collector. Uh, that kind of puts everything together. And that's what also allows you to start to build your structure. So we look at the chapters here. And this is where you, you build that, that hierarchy of, of uh, indenture and whatnot. And as you add your requirements, you can shuffle them around um, when you're in edit mode. The, the controls here become available. And like everything else in Innovator, you do have your, your right-click uh, context menu to allow you to 
to do some of the things in a, in a little less mouse movement. And also you'll notice that in addition to the requirement document being uh, revision controlled and having uh, life cycle status, all the requirements themselves also have life cycle states and revisions. So everything here is revision controlled. Um, I'm seeing a note, resolution. Okay, give me one second. Apologize for that. Okay, so back into our requirement document here. So where were we? Just talking about the, the states and the revisions. And, and you get a bit of information here to tell you what those requirements are about. The title is is very much like any other title, a quick description of what, what your particular requirement is. The text is where you start to get a little deeper into that. But you see the information, priorities, and risks. So you can sort by that. And everything is the same as all the other innovator grid uh, bits of information. You've got information about files and links uh, over here on the far right that gives you even more information. So real quick, I just want to show you the other side of things. When we jump into requirements themselves, they're also listed out. And, and I have a number of requirements in here, uh, quite a few, actually. And what you're seeing here is the, those requirements is just the individual items. So we're just in the, the item grid. And again, I, I have the same information here, basically, that was presented in the requirement document. Um, and I get some informa good information here in terms of file attachments. If this is attached to parts with just a quick little icon to tell me what's going on. Uh, inbound and outbound links. And uh, I'm actually going to circle back to those in just a minute. So as far as, let's, uh, let's jump into one of these requirements. And I actually have a couple open already. So some of the slick things in the requirements themselves as you're authoring them and generating the, the content, you already saw some of the, the bits of information, complexity. These are all runoff drop downs. So when we're in edit mode here, you can actually uh, select these. And, and these lists are customizable, so if, if you don't want low, medium, high, you can change those. Um, we also have an out-of-the-box category capability in here that is in addition to our classification. So you may have a, a schema at your company by which you classify information. We're 100 percent compatible with all of that. And, and that's all part of the, the core functionality of Aris Innovator. And that's extended to all of our item types. And, and really, requirements and requirements documents are an extension of that data model. They are just more items. All of Innovator is, is items, uh, which is what makes Innovator so powerful and its ability to grow and customize to what you do. Um, so some of the slick ability here that we've got is, is you get down to the text pane here. You'll notice I've got some text and I've got some hyperlinks, too. So I've got this rich text ability, and we've got an editor built in here. So I can build links. I can change the fonts. I can change the colors and indent. And all the good things that you would see in a, in a decent text editor, like a Microsoft Word or, or any other that you might use. Um, we also have the ability to add tables and whatnot. So um, this particular requirement was talking about the printing technology for the, the, uh, the 3D printer we have uh, for our examples here. I want to show you also, in terms of some of the other capabilities we have. I've also got in this guy here, we can add files. So I, talking about our links, I can drop in my file here. And hey, I want it to look nice. I want the, this might be a, a concept sketch. It might be a rendering from your, your uh, design team or something to that effect. A few different uh, ways you could, you could do some things. Uh, depending on how your company works, uh, maybe it's a, a rendering from the customer. Any of those things that you might want to have attached and be able to take a look at things. And I've got another requirement that I already pre-opened. So this is an area where growing on that uh, related parts, we, you can also put in external links here. So this uh, is to a, a just a hyperlink and to a little fake website just to give you an idea. You might link to, uh, if you're in aerospace, to some FAA information, for example, or if you're in transportation or automotive to NTSB information, something like that. And that gives all of the folks that are going in and operating on those requirements or that are linking to the requirements the ability to go and get that information. Um, 
that way you're not copying that information in having uh, your own copy on your site and then perhaps the FAA updates it and you didn't know about it. We also have the ability to outgoing and have outgoing and incoming links. So this is an example here of where I've actually attached this, this particular software uh, requirement to the test spec that, that we have in our, in our list of requirement documents. So you can have requirement to requirement linkage to be feeding information. It, it might be a hierarchical linkage in some cases, but in this case, we're linking from one requirement that's in one document to a requirement in another document. And um, just to quickly give you a, a look at that, just to, so in this case, we were linking from requirement document one, the 3D printer requirements, down to the software test plan. So that as the testing team got a hold of things and they were get into the particular requirement that had to do with what to test, they would be able to follow that link back to that software requirement, the initial requirement and to be able to get their hands on that particular requirement for how it should be tested to meet conformance. So here's the that particular features to be tested requirement. And you'll notice again, I've got the link here that says, hey, I've got a link. So as I, when I open this particular individual requirement, I'll be able to see that link and follow that back so that I have traceability, I have access. And this is also one of the, the strong points of Innovator is that everything's built in. Everything is all in, in one system. Everything is linked together. So what I wanted to do here, um, it's nice to kind of to, to walk through some things and show you some things, but I wanted to try and give you a, a notional example of, um, of how things would work. I'm just checking to see if there's any questions or anything that popped up. Nope, everything was good. So uh, trying to have a little bit of fun here. So if you can kind of imagine maybe that, that you're, a, you're in charge of a, a product line or something like that and, and um, your, your company's coming up with some ideas and you want to do a new thing, a new product, whatever, whatever widget or, or system you might make. And so your boss comes to you and he says, you know what, hey, uh, we, want to, um, we want to make a new product and he hands you this document here. And uh, so... Um, Looks like today we're going to uh, be joining the Avengers, and we'll have a little fun today. And uh, we're going to take this document that was given to us, and just to kind of give you a little example of how you might take this and, and run with it. Um, just pretty notional here, some uh, what might be in here. And it's obviously gibberish text, but I think you'll get the idea. Of uh, this document, typically, if you get it from a customer, it might be hundreds of pages long. So you'll be kind of parsing that out because you want to be able to manage it in individual requirement level. So real quick, we're just going to make a requirement document here. So when I bring that guy in, I can give it a description. Um, my requirement document number is going to be generated automatically. So is my revision status, very typical of Innovator in here. So when I determine who this is managed by, I can either type it in if I know the information, or if I want to go in and do a search, like my typical innovator capabilities, I can put in the information I have. So there we go. And we have that document in there, so let's go and attach that document, because that came from my customer. I want to keep my hands on that guy and be able to refer back to that over time. So I can just go in and pick it from whatever folder I have it stored in. And I can make the attachment. Boom. Now it's attached to the our requirement document. Let's give this guy a save. And at this point, hey, we've got a requirement document, but we don't have any content in there. I'm just uh, keeping an eye out to on our, I see a question here. Does linking to parts is possible to link to requirements to attributes or properties of parts? No, we don't link at that granular level, um, but that's not to say you couldn't um, with the way Innovator works. But a, an individual uh, property, not so much. You'd have to kind of come up with a customized property to allow that type of linkage. And uh, so as you're, you're building your content in here, this is now where basically you start authoring your requirements. And so I can actually add a, a couple of requirements just by adding the relationship. And it'll, you notice that they're blank, but that's okay. 
what we're going to do is just drop in a couple to give you an idea. So if we're uh, if we're if we're part of uh, the Avengers or Shield or something, yeah, I, I, I watched the Avengers last week, so it's kind of on my head. So I want to make sure my new Iron Man suit has survivability, and uh, I want to make sure I've got this fancy AI artificial intelligence. And Iron Man is cool because he can fly. So we're going to have some requirements for propulsion. So. Right there, if, if I'm just starting to author my requirements, if maybe you're an R&D uh, type person, or maybe even at the marketing level, you're just, you can just start roughing these requirements out. Um, now, one note, I did turn off the requirement for priority risk and uh, the um, completion just because uh, so I could do this a little faster. Out of the box, we have those as required. It's just a matter of flipping a flag to make them not required. Um, and uh, so I've got those these guys in here now, so I can actually save this, this requirement document again. And when I do that, it's actually going to go through and update all these individual requirements that I put in and give them the next requirement number in line. So it's using the standard innovator ability to, to use uh, sequences, and that's all user definable. So maybe if you don't want it to be REQ or you want to have a different numbering schema, that's all user customizable. So I can now as maybe this is kind of where it hands off to someone starting to get into a little more details and you're getting more into your uh, your product line engineering type folks. I think I see a question. I'm going to try and break real quick. I really can't selectively show or hide, so I think what you are referring to here is, is maybe I want to hide this particular requirement from someone. Uh, no. However, you could probably take and have used a show hide capability using your configure, or I'm sorry, using categorization and or uh, classification and build a, a custom um, set of permissions and viewing from that. So I hope that uh, helps. And I see another note here about categorizing my program product. Absolutely. Uh, and that just depends on how you establish your, your categorization, how you establish your classification. Uh, there's the different ways to do that, and that gets a little bit um, complicated for a, a quick demo here because there's some different schools of thought, but yes, you can do that definitely. Um, so hopefully that uh, link gives you a little bit of information there. And so I'm uh, just going to now kind of think of if I were not more of a design engineer or like I said, a product line engineer, it'd probably be a little more uh, uh, better example here. So I'm actually going to dive in now. Let's go in and start to refine these requirements and start to add some information. So I can actually add, go in this guy and say, hey, I need to lock this up. So now I can jump in here and say, well, geez, I'm concerned about things like durability. I'm concerned about things like strength. I'm concerned about things like my offensive systems. Because you know, that's what makes Iron Man cool. So um, and my spelling. I am an engineer. If it weren't for spell checker, I'd be in a lot of trouble. And, and this is where I can go in and start to add, put in my, my complexity. Well, this is going to be pretty complex, and, and there's some risks involved here. So uh, filling that information in, I can start to, to link to my, my different requirements and, uh, and adding links if necessary. And then I'm going to also just say, All right, well, hey, geez. Now that I've done that, I've, I've added a bunch of information. I've also decided that, the geez, I, I think I need a, another requirement in here to, to better give me some information. So I'm going to add an, another requirement here to the list. Make this a little bigger for you. So this is an area where we want to get deeper into that offensive systems. And uh, also, so I can now, I want that to be a child of that survivability. So I can move that up and down. Like I mentioned, we've got the, the different abilities here to move up and down and left and right. And the left and right really isn't a, a move so much as it is an indent. So now this guy is, is indented. So it now becomes a child in terms of the relationship that we have built in the background of, of Innovator. And I can give a quick save to this guy. Now I'm going to, just like we did before, it's going to give it a requirement number. I can now go into that, that guy and I can give some information. I can fill that out. And uh, 
continue to add that content, whatever it needs to be, make the links and, and whatnot. So uh, perhaps along the way, one of the things that you've got a project plan. So you've gone in and you've, you've made all of these uh, requirements and, and you've got that information. So if you are managing your projects in Innovator also, maybe you've got a, so we've got a number of projects here that, that we had with our, our demo from uh, uh, the, from ACE that have to do with our 3D printer. And you can see it's got some, some phases, and some milestone completions to give you uh, ideas of how things are going. Uh, pretty typical project management, uh, very much like a, uh, a Microsoft project or, or similar type of capability there. And if I open up my project here, perhaps I've got my, my document requirements here. It was a task. It was assigned to Tony Stark. So he went and did all that. All that work's been done now. And so I want to come in and, and take credit for it being done. But some of the slick things that, that we're able to do with the requirements then is I can go in and first I need to lock it. That help. So I could go in and add some comments in here, uh, but what I really want to show you is the ability to add this deliverable. So I can make a, a relationship here of my deliverable. So I want to pull in a requirement document. Well, you, we can make that as our, our connection. So here's our, our, our new requirement document we built. I'm going to make that connection to this particular activity that we had in this in this project. And I'm going to say, hey, I'm, I'm done, 100% done here. And now I can, I can update my project. And so if you're using the project management capability, that's just a, another nice ability we have within Innovator. Um, quickly, as we're kind of getting a little close on time, uh, time flies me having fun. Some of the other abilities with requirements also is that I can go in and if I take a look at my document here, they have life cycles. So this is the life cycle that we have defined currently for, for requirements. Just like everything else in Innovator, you can define your own life cycle. This was, again, a, a conceptual idea that we try to build to, to give all you guys some examples of how you might want to use the, the abilities. But also, if we take a look at our change management, we can go ahead and, and take a look at an ECO, for example, and we could be bringing these changes. We can add the requirements as action, as, I'm sorry, as affected items to a change. And this also, in terms of having our change options here, this also has workflow ability to go with those life cycles which is one of the other strengths of Innovator, that we have the life cycle and the workflow that work hand in hand together. So I can run this through this particular workflow of, of, of having planning on the change, reviews or drafting these changes and whatnot. And different businesses are going to have different things set up in different ways. So some of the, the things that we have in terms of our change management ability, we've got a simple change package. We have an express change package, and also we have the CM2 compliant. Uh, with the uh, ECN, ECR, and PR. So we've got different flavors that we have out of the box. A lot of our customers will tweak those to fit your business processes. And, and that's really a, a lot of what we're trying to do is give you, you the ability to tweak for the, your particular business processes. So you're, you're working through your requirements and, and you've, got your, you've been checking off the, the items in your, your project plan. You might want to say, well, geez, where's my status on this? So let me take a look at my, my requirements by priority. So we've got reporting capabilities also. And so I can get a quick report to see my requirements by priority. And hey, they're still in draft. And this is where you can go knock on someone's door and, hey, we're trying to keep an eye on things for this particular uh, requirement. And um, import, export, and format supported. That was the, the $10,000 question I was expecting. Um, the, the import-export capability is, um, 
So let me, real quick, I'm just going to close the loop on reporting here. Uh, we've, we've got out-of-the-box XSLT reports that I just showed you. You can customize those and, and create an indefinite number of reports that you might need. We also support Microsoft reporting services, and that's uh, and we also have a new self-service reporting capability that's going to be pretty exciting. Those allow you to start to make much more complex reports. Uh, reporting services, for example, if you wanted to format a report and have it dump that information in an elegant way into Microsoft Word, in a format that you might give to a business leader uh, instead of a, a simple table, for example. Um, the question about import-export. We currently have a couple different abilities. It, because we're built on XML, what we call AML, and I actually opened something here for you ahead of time. So when I actually run my, I, I wrote a quick AML script, very simple here, and just run it. And you see the return down here. And you'll notice some of the information here. So I've got key name and revisions and, and the different bits of information, the properties that you saw. So one of the, the abilities we have is, is if I have, for example, uh, an Excel file, it's very easy for me to take an Excel or a tabular data file and make a, an importer to be able to read that and, and format it properly into an, an AML string to import with. So we can use any type of standard information. Uh, you could build custom integrators for if you had a non-standard. Uh, a lot of people want to pull from perhaps Microsoft Word in a parsing situation. While it's very possible, especially with the new Word being XML based, the challenge is, is making sure the formatting is consistent. Uh, very doable. Uh, we definitely support that. It would just be the matter of, of basically having a preprocessor, if you will, that would generate the AML script. What we do have uh, currently out of the box is we do have a um, we have our batch loader that we use that we can actually uh, move data into that to use that to maybe bring in uh, requirements if you're migrating off of an old system or if you just use Excel like a lot of customers do. Um, we also, because everything is, we have an, an open capability, anything with another, any type of standard or, or open API we can integrate with. We do have some partners that have uh, integration with Doors, for example, that we could leverage that. Uh, and really, integration with Doors, uh, another popular package out there, is uh, it sits on the RecIF standard. It's another XML standard. So um, there's some ability there. And I hopefully I answered that question. I think I'm, I'm seeing another question about uh, connect requirements to the relevant test cases on a part. Yeah, that, that's very uh, that's very doable. Uh, one thing I didn't get a chance to, since we're a little tight on time here. It's very straightforward to now if you were kind of on the back end and you were wrapping things up uh, and you said, hey, have I met my requirements? This is where you can go into your part and now attach your requirement to it to be able to say that, all right, this part is what achieves a said requirement. So this is our MakerBot example. And in our relationship tabs down here, this particular part achieves these requirements. And just like if you saw me a little go making uh, attaching relationships, this would just be where you attach that relationship to those requirements or requirement documents. So a number of different ways that you could potentially do that that suits your business process. And um, hopefully that answers that question. Um, uh, we are a little tight on time, but I think I will call it kind of close there and, and ask if there's any other questions that I can answer. Are requirements management items available out of the box? Yes, they are. When you install the RM package, again, this is something that your, your IT staff would typically do, that would all be installed, the database would be configured, and you would have access to the requirements, the requirements, documents, all those would be created. I see another question. This feature is available, does it need to this is definitely a subscription. This is not part of the, the open source part of the product. And the, you, can, you could download it, but again, you wouldn't be able to install it, or, or you could install it, but you wouldn't be able to activate it. You need the feature license for that. Like I said, a little tight on time, but I don't know if there's anything else I can answer for you. You can always get a hold of us here at Aris through our, our sales and marketing team, and if you guys have questions, they'll, they'll get us involved in the product management side so we can help you out. And I guess I'll turn it over to Stephen at this point to see if we have any other questions. 
All right, thanks, Dave. Yeah, I think we got to pretty much all the questions. There are a couple other questions coming through. We didn't get a chance to get to all of them, but they are uh, tracked and recorded, so we will follow up with you individually if, if we missed you. Like I said, we do these once a month. Uh, next month we'll be covering self-service reporting, so if you want to go to airs.com slash demo series, you can register for next month's demo. Um, and with all that being said, I thank you all for attending and hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.